blood versus throw. That used to be something that we had to all pretty much contend with back when there weren't lights that offered both in the same package and today I want to show you a bunch of companies that have solved the problem of creating a flashlight that produces both types of beams. They've done it quite efficiently as well to the point where you can even carry some of these in your pocket. So I want to go through the first type and this is the dual lens kind of configuration here and this is an interesting configuration because technically speaking you know you've you've got these you've got the mr90 that has dual reflectors so there's you know dual uh, dual beams completely but this one here actually uses a proper lens in there it looks like some type of convex lens and then you've got these three tir lenses so it completely separates out both of these beams and that's the, the Terminator M2. And basically, very easily allows you to switch seamlessly between both beams. Okay, just show you on the camera like that. Okay, the advantages of this kind of design is that the separation means both of the beams are well balanced. With a lot of those zoomable lights, you do find that they have a middle area where there are beam artifacts and just some, yeah, just some interesting issues when you have it zoomed in, zoomed out, sometimes, you know, discoloration and stuff like that. But there's no issues here because each, each LED, you know, configuration is optimized for the lens, uh, both lenses here. So, yeah, cons expensive okay i think this one i can't remember how much it goes for I, I think it's a hundred and something dollars with the m2 because there's nothing else like it out there okay so obviously they're going to be able to charge a little bit more for this kind of design you know there's also a more powerful version of this light throw wise anyway the terminator m1 that has an lep beam in here a focusable lep beam it is also, you know, a little bit awkward, a little bit cumbersome to use at times. I kind of just hold it like this, use the thumb to switch between that back button and the front button. But sometimes I'm not quite sure how to hold it. Sometimes I hold it like this as well, you know, between my two fingers and flick between this button and, you know, in the back. Okay, it's not a deal breaker. It does feel a little bit strange, but yeah, it's not the most ergonomic flashlight. Next up, we've got these kind of zoomable flashlights. Okay, so these... A couple that I've owned now, uh, the LED lens are here for quite a while, over a year. I've just recently got the Convoy Z1. And as you can see, these are fairly compact, normal looking tube style flashlights. Okay, it's a similar profile to any kind of normal reflector flashlight out there. This one probably is going to be a bit difficult to pocket. The good thing about the Terminator M2 though, is that even though it is a funny shape, I would say this is actually a lot more compact and easy to carry than these two here. Just because the head, the diameter of the head is a bit wide, you're going to feel that more in your pocket. If you're going for something like the Z1 as well, you're going to get excellent value for money out of all these flashlights. This is probably the best value one. And you can see the P6R Core QC here on the left. It is going to cost you a little bit more, probably like three or four times as much. But there are some additional features in it as well, different LEDs, four different LEDs, okay? Cons of this type of configuration, this type of zoomable configuration, and the Z1, that's how it zooms in, basically you sort of rotate, twist the head, okay? Cons is that the light output does reduce when you zoom in, okay? The middle zoom does have some artifacts. I do find that when you're completely zoomed out, beam is really smooth and just more of that light is able to get out through the bezel. None of it gets sort of trapped and absorbed uh, by the, you know, the surrounding material around the LED. But when you have it completely zoomed out, yeah, it's more optimized for throw, but you're gonna lose a little bit of output. One thing I noticed as well with these zoomy lights is that the head can often be larger than lights with similar specifications. And that's in order to you know, accommodate for this convex lens. This is the Imolent MR90, and Imolent have found a way to solve that problem of flood versus throw by putting in multiple reflectors in the head. So you can see here, you've got the smooth reflector around the SBT 90.2 and all these smaller 
orange pill reflectors for the XHP 70.2 LEDs in here. So you really get the best of both worlds, you know, separation of beams, and the beams are both well balanced because there's, uh, you know, separate reflectors for all these beams, okay? Uh, you can also get lights like this, not the MR90, but the Sophone IF30. There's also headlamps with multiple LEDs in them. Generally, a cheaper option when compared to the zoomable lights and, you know, something like the Terminator M2, which is quite unique. Of course, there are going to be cons as well. And the trade-off here is in order to produce, you know, well-balanced beams here in terms of uh, lots of flood and lots of throw, the light is just going to have to be bigger. You know, if it was only just that throwy beam in there, they could reduce, cut most of this flashlight down. It'd only be around this uh, this big. There are smaller lights and headlamps as well that have multiple reflectors and LEDs in there, but the challenge with those is that it can lead to heat dissipation issues and challenges. So yeah, where there's no trade-off, this light's going to be pretty gigantic as you see here. Now the fourth design of these flood slash throw flashlights I wanted to talk about is the Nightcore series, the EDC33 and the 35. They have this new LED, and I don't own any of these lights, by the way. I've just heard and read about them, so I can't comment too much on them, but I will have a few photos up here on the screen so you can see them. But they have this UHI series of LEDs, and you can see on some of them they have this center section, which has a round LED, you know, designed for long distance throw high high level of brightness and light you know compared to the die surface you've and then around the edges there are smaller leds that produce flood so you can toggle in between the larger led in the center that's more focused and more designed for throw and the smaller leds which produce a kind of flood beam and the pros of this kind of design is in this, you know, this EDC 3335 design by Nightcore is that it's very compact, easy to pocket. Out of all these lights, that EDC 33-35 series is going to be smaller, okay, and have superior brightness to size ratio. But one of the big things, obviously, one of the cons is that it's going to get hot quite quickly. You're going to have a fast step down. There's going to be precautions just built in to make sure that, that, that the light doesn't damage itself. And uh, so you will have a fast step down. And that's just, you know, at the end of the day, it just comes down to how much heat sinking material you have on there. It's, until LEDs become even more efficient than they are today, we're still going to have to deal with these larger hosts if we want sustained brightness. Another thing with the EDC 33 and 35 series is that they have built in batteries as well. So a lot of people are going to be turned off by that. I know that's a consideration I look at, you know, fairly fairly highly with with lights you know especially if you're taking them on camping trips and stuff like that you want to make sure you've got a few spare batteries in case something goes wrong and you can swap them out easily and from what i hear as well the ui uis are a little bit more complex on the edc 3335 but again i don't own both of these lights i'm just sort of speculating based on what i've heard and read but anyway those are the four different ways and uh, it's really interesting and i'm just I'm just amazed what these companies are coming up with nowadays, and I'm sure they're going to come up with some more solutions to this to this issue. And uh, one thing I really want to see more of is the zoomable LEP flashlights. As we get more efficient and more affordable LEP modules, putting them into smaller hosts and being able to focus them as well, it's only a matter of time before the LEPs get more efficient. And so we'll be producing lots and lots of throw and uh, not too much heat, lots of lumens as well, all in the same package. So anyway, that's the that's my kind of rant over. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you had questions, stuff like that, leave it in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, click the like button and share the video with a friend. It really helps me to get the video out to more people. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you want to see more flashlight reviews, content, latest news, make sure you subscribe. Ace Beam Terminator M2. Okay, and this has... Oh, check that out. Just this really large hotspot that projects all the way to the back really impressive I think it's about 500 meters range not a whole lot of spill but 
And you can just see in front of you, nothing special. Most of the light, 90% of the light's concentrated in that beam up ahead. And it's just so simple to switch between the flood. There's a little switch to just flick in between, like that. Okay. You can also toggle and go to go through the different modes. Two, three, four. This is the flood mode. Double press for the turbo flood. And you can also access both flood and spot at the same time. Okay. But of course, going back to the beginning again, just toggling in between. So, you know, each beam, like I said, looks quite distinct. And there's no artifacts, there's no compromise with each beam because they're housed in separate lenses, basically a tube each. Convoy Z1 with the W5050 SQ3. This is the 3000K version. Okay, that's completely zoomed in, but as you can see, I can zoom out to get a much larger hotspot. And I find when you've got you've got it zoomed in about halfway, the beam's a little bit ringy. It doesn't look so nice, but you know what? It does the job. You can't say that it doesn't do the job. Okay, but I'd say when you zoom out completely like this, you get much, a much more even looking beam. Though the center of the beam, there's a slightly brighter hot spot, fairly noticeable. Okay. I can zoom it in and check this out. Wow, that's just, that's just incredible how far this thing throws. And it just, even though I have lights that throw further than this, it looks so dramatic because there's no, it's basically no spill. So it just looks like this pinpoint, <laughs> like search beam, where you can see everything within the, the perimeter of the beam and everything else is pretty much dark. So it's, it's just, yeah, it leads to a very dramatic look. It's super fun, I have to say. This is a really fun flashlight to have. You're looking for a little lightsaber kind of style torch. And I've got the LED lenser here, P6R Core QC zoomable lens and it's got four different beams that you can quickly switch to just this pull and that pull in to to sort of zoom out pull out to to zoom in as you can see here and you get some decent throw i mean i can see to the back of those trees not so well but i can yeah i can see to the back of those trees but it's just that ease of you know, with the Z1, you've got to just take a bit of time unscrewing it. It takes a little bit too much time, if you ask me, but does the job. But this one here is more seamless. I mean, look at that. To just swap in between both of the beams, so simple. And I'll just show you on the P7R Work UV. You know, that's the extent of the beam, so zoom out zoom in as you can see and it's just a slight twist it's about about a one eighth twist that gets you there okay I'm just cycling through the different modes that is high mode sustainable output high mode which is I mean this is more than this is more than you'll need for almost any purpose beautiful looking beam sacrifices on throw, a little bit of throw, but the beam still reaches and tints the back of those trees. But the beam profile itself is just so pleasing. It's one of my favorite beam profiles in a, in a flashlight. Yeah, that turbo mode is just a tiny bit brighter.
the Imolent MR90 multiple reflectors and this is the SBT 90.3 all right and it's just blowing out the camera at the moment it's incredibly bright that's just with the SBT 90.3 okay that is holy cow that is turbo but with only the flood mode on Oh my god, I can just, the whole place is completely lit up. And you can also turn on the spot beam at the same time. Incredible. Uh, let's just go back to these lower modes. Okay, so you just put it on the lower mode so you can see, because it was just completely, completely just... Uh, obliterating the camera the photo before and uh, the good thing is that it can actually maintain a lot of these modes these lower modes so-called lower modes because the light is just gigantic okay you can just have it on flood maybe let's put it one above okay and then you've got both flood plus the throw beam Okay, or just the throw SBT 90.2 beam. Yeah, it's really the best of both worlds, but again, it's a heavy flashlight. It's a big flashlight.